Welcome to TRS Clips, where you'll find happiness through your own curiosity. Liver transplantation. Yeah. There is something uh, that I would like to talk here from a personal point of view also, because I have been in the eye of the storm on social media on this. Um, I mean, the, the, something that our country lacks uh, is a good transplant system. I'm, I'm talking about just purely from the liver transplantation point of view. We don't have a centralized system for liver transplantation. You'll have to give some context here. You mean yeah. there needs to be a body where some people can come and donate livers after death? Yeah. So uh, in the US, let me take the example sure. of United States. So they have something known as a UNOS. That is a United Network for Organ Sharing. So if and they have a lot of disease donors. So we have two ways to get the organ for patients who require the liver, who are in end stage liver disease. One is something known as uh, donation after brain death. So the person is alive, but the, he is brain dead, which means he's not going to wake up anytime. So they donate voluntarily the organ to a person who requires it. What if the person wakes up and you No, that is, that is why we have uh, brain death certification rules. So there are rules, there are clinical uh, guidelines set up to ensure that that, pe that person is brain dead. And after that, and it's a step-by-step -step process which takes many, many hours to do that. But they can survive without a liver? No, the brain dead patient means he's, he's dead. He's oh, considered okay. dead. He's not clinically dead. He's brain dead. But then he'll die at some point anyways. So before that, we use him to give life to others. So that is the whole point of voluntary organ donation. Okay. And that, 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 that's actually how, how humanity or humanism works in uh, transplantation medicine. So that is one way to give the organ. The second way is something known as living donation. So for example, I'm not getting a brain dead donor on time and the patient is going to die very soon. So a family member decides to donate a part of the liver. So that is known as living donation. So a part of the liver, whichever, whatever amount of liver that is required for the patient to function quickly, because the liver will grow, like we said before, it will grow very fast within four to six weeks. We give that part of the liver to that person and he will survive. So this is known as living donation and it comes from the relatives. As in the relatives and the patient's liver will both grow because of that one healthy liver. Yeah, so the patient's liver will fully come out because that's a bad liver. The whole yeah. liver will come out and the part of this the relative's liver will go in. And both will grow? Yes, both will grow because it's a healthy liver. It will grow very fast and both the patient and the donor will be fine. So that is living donation, which is what is happening mostly in India. In the US, they have more of disease donation. So you have this organ sharing network where they have all these people who have pledged their organ donations or voluntarily donated the liver, they'll all come into that. And then they'll match that with whoever the recipient is at various parts of the country, whoever requires it faster, whoever can wait a little bit. So they will transfer this organ accordingly to that port. Uber person. for organs. Yeah, I mean, Uber we can just call. Usually <laughs> here, you have, to, you have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so it's, it's like, uh, it's like a, a good system that works. Uh, depending on who needs it first. So mm. it's very well, well settled there. Mm. In India, we don't have such a system. So if you go to Delhi or if you go to Kerala, they'll have their own organ sharing network, uh, which is for that region. So for example, uh, if I have a liver for, if a patient is brain dead in Kerala, that uh, brain dead patient's liver cannot be used in Tamil Nadu or in Karnataka because it's not centralized. We can use it only in here. But, but there might be pe people who might be requiring that uh, organ much more there than here. So that kind of system is not available here. So we have these two. So most of these is from living donation that we have in India. Now, because of this, uh, and there are there are cost differences. So uh, you're getting a whole liver from a brain dead patient versus you're getting part of the liver from a living person. The surgery is more complex in the living because it's a healthy person. You have to make sure that the person will be okay after the trans after the surgery. And it it's two surgeries at a time. And here it's just one surgery because already the person is brain dead and you're just getting the liver and putting in the... So there are cost differences also. In India, because of this, there is a lot of patients on the wait list who are actually dying without getting a liver on time. How long is the wait list? I mean, I have patients who waited on the list for two years and died in front of me in my ICU. I mean, we could not offer them a liver and they did not have a matching donor in the family. And they tried their level best to get a matching donor, but we could not. I mean, there, I mean, this is not one story. I mean, I have hundreds of patients like that. Is this the biggest problem that transplantation medicine is facing in India? This is the prob core problem, but there is a bigger problem. Mm. What happens is that 
um i mean kerala was one of the states where we had maximum numbers of brain dead sharing you know it was as good as spain till 2017 2018 and what happened was that in 2017 2018 if i am right a movie released in kerala a malayalam movie by the name joseph i'm not sure you've heard of it that movie actually showed uh people were actually getting killed and their organs were given to hospitals as part of a, a, a racket kidney kidnapping kidney and liver whatever mm. you know it's like a huge racket going on like that it was a fictional story but people took it to heart you know and the organ sharing just suddenly collapsed in kerala after that movie came out because everyone thought all the hospitals doing transplantation is doing it for the money killing people and people thought that people on the brain dead proclamation list were actually not brain dead but doctors are making them brain dead and taking their organs this conspiracy just flew so much out of control that me my father my father is a very senior gastroenterologist he is one of the first gastroenterologists in india only he's done a lot of he's a padma shri award winner also uh, in 2010 uh, his name is uh, philip agustin yeah, his name is dr philip agustin so uh, he me all of us were actually sucked into this conspiracy and this happened also recently really yeah where uh, my father started the first living donation transplant program in kerala in uh, lake shore hospital and uh, we had very good program there and somebody a conspiracy theorist who's also a doctor by the way a proper mbbs doctor he said that you know this hospital is actually killing young men and collecting their organs out of jealousy i have no idea or maybe out of that 15 minutes of fame that he wanted or maybe he is doing that for money because people do that to hospitals and hospitals don't want their name to come out in the open so they'll just give him settlement money you know don't go for this case just take this money and be on the side you know people do that but we did not because we never did that and i was not part of that hospital at the time i was doing my uh, you know training and my studies uh, in calcutta and delhi but uh, when this happened in 2009 this just blew out of proportion and uh we had this huge conspiracy theory going in kerala that you know this hospital and other hospitals are actually collecting patients uh, i mean making killing patients and taking their organs out that has actually impacted the transplantation program even now why i am saying this out here in the open on your podcast is that when somebody makes that conspiracy theory and and by the way that theory has never been proven even now i mean the guy has been started he started cases in 2009 now it's 2024 no doctors were arrested no doctors are charged cheated uh, it went to the magistrate court it was taken out from there it went to the national tribunal commission for organ transplantation was taken out from there then he sent a private complaint again in 2019 to another local court there which the court ordered again let us look at it again and then the whole thing blew out of proportion again and this keeps happening and now it is all settled again because nobody could prove anything i mean this particular case Uh, but these things keep coming and coming and in social media people keep talking about it again and again taking my name my dad's name taking the name of organ transplantation in the name of killing people and all that mm. please don't do that because when there is a dearth of organ donation voluntarily from people there are people on the list dying we should consider that also so this is one big bigger problem that we are facing now this whole conspiracy theory in organ transplantation like we have anti vaccination in the west it's spreading throughout india and we are getting lesser and lesser brain dead donations and because of that young people are dying on the list were you guys attacked because of this i mean attacked in different ways not physically but the whole social media disinformation campaign was quite bad my dad is 76 years old he has done everything spent his whole life giving back to people and uh, i mean to face this now at this age it's it's quite sad to see that and uh, i mean we fought it to the nail our lawyers are good and now these guys are on the back foot because we have evidence to show that everything was done as per rules and guidelines and nobody was killed for any organ but these stories will keep happening again and again in again and again you know maybe about 5 years later 6 years later but people should understand that this is where the critical thinking comes you know these are stories never proven and organ transplantation saves lives it does imagine a patient of mine who was an alcohol abuse alcohol use disorder patient uh with severe liver disease decides to quit alcohol become good uh wanted to care for his family now wanted a new life but also needs the liver to do that hmm. so he is fully abstaining he has changed his ways he changed his life and he is waiting for a liver and he does not get that liver and he dies after 2 years with young children and a wife leaving a young children and a wife i mean the the hurt that 
I go through, the hurt that that family goes through, because this conspiracy theory has been moving around, and we are not getting livers on time, it's just so damaging. Okay, sorry, uh, you have to go through this, sir. Uh, honestly, I mean, uh, it's it's. I think it's important because only with confusion we can get clarity. Very interestingly, so I mean, do you know how the organ donation works in India? So it's an it's an exclusive program. For example, if you pledge your organs to that particular society, only then they will consider you as an organ donor. Otherwise, you will just go. I mean, after I mean, whatever brain dead or after death, you'll just go six feet under or get cremated. I mean, whatever is the tradition, and then that that body is gone, right? So if you are part of that donation list, you want to pledge your organs only. That organs can be used. But look at France. France is so beautiful. They have a small legal or a law which states says that everybody is considered as an organ donor until they refuse. Wow. Yeah. So they have an exclusion list. So you have to go on the list and say that I refuse to give my organs to other human beings. You know, and then they will not take your organs. Otherwise, everybody is an organ donor by law, which is why you get very high rates of organ transplantation in France. very high rates of advanced liver disease patients surviving for longer duration in france it's fantastic so such a system we need to promote uh, you know better healthcare or better lives for patients who are on advanced liver disease listing in india let me switch to another country from this point of view china so if you look at all the liver transplantation research clinical research uh you'll actually see very very less research being published from china so you have very big big uh, journals where we publish our liver research findings and all that and we have journals for liver transplantation also uh, in us and europe and all but you will see very small numbers of publications from china you know why because the chinese has a different idea what they do is they kill people on the death list and use the organs for the patients kill people on the death list as in so there are these prisoners who have been oh. serving life or oh, maybe damn. on the death list so what they do is they make them brain dead and then they use those organs for they make them brain dead yeah how do you make someone brain dead i mean it's 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 easy to do that i mean you give a set of injections and you do certain procedures you can make a person brain dead and uh, then they harvest organs and give lobotomy i think it's called uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, lobotomy is one part of it, but this, this, this—I mean, they won't be conscious, you know. They won't be conscious, but they'll be conscious, conscious, but not alert, and you know, like that. So Chinese do that, which is why uh, you don't get many publications from China in uh, liver transplantation journals. And there are many articles retracted after publication. Many articles were actually retracted and removed from these journals because they found out that the transplantation that was done in those particular articles were actually from killed prisoners. Because worldwide, in retrospect, yeah, people would consider this murder. That's murder. It is murder. It is. It is murder. It is murder. Yeah. So, so that is ha- what is happening in the China part of it. So, so such a grey <laughs> zone this is because those guys are evil. That's why they're in prison. But yeah. in, there's a whole argument or false accusation. I don't want to get yeah. in there, but yeah, but it's not easy to discuss that topic at all because they have their reasons. We have our reasons because we are all humans. We are not supposed to kill somebody to save somebody, and ultimately, that's. it's it's a gray area i i don't know how the transplant community also looks at it because china is china and uh, we don't i mean so they don't publish such uh, cases and articles from them based on this kind of thing in transplantation so uh, that that also happens on the side so that is why we need a good govern govern uh, a, a very good program that is governed by a proper body a regulatory authority which can ethically and morally consider organ transplantation for people in india which is lacking here you know i was going to ask you about what the possible solution here is the possible solution here is policy yeah. so my angle is why can't and tell me the honest input here why can't doctors all over the country get together go to the health ministry and say listen this is what we need next what's what's the friction there like this is a very important question you know what because our public health infrastructure and services are not up to the mark to provide organ transplantation across the board in the country as in even if the government agrees and policies are made the infrastructure the hospitals the yeah. number of doctors in the hospitals are not up to the mark yes i mean public sector so if you look at the transplant programs in india 
it's all shouldered by the private sector so the maximum number of organ transplantation that is happening in kerala is probably in major three hospitals that is one is amrita hospital one is aster hospital fantastic programs and one is our place rajagiri hospital so three uh, institutes in uh, in kochi area takes a lot of burden of liver transplantation kochi also has a medical college a government medical college but they don't even have a hepatology department there they don't have a gastroenterology department there they have absolutely no organ donation facilities or organ transplantation facilities there so if it has to be a program that is governed by the government body it means that it has to be an equitable and a, and a affordable program where the financial burden on the person or the patient and the family becomes much lesser in the private sector that does not happen because you have to pay so you are approaching this from two angles one anything you're saying about transplantation medicine is actually from a mass perspective we're talking about the masses of india where their bodies are the same as ours so they'll go through the same problems yeah uh but the second angle here is that uh, we just don't have enough hospitals and we we have enough hospitals but we don't have enough of uh infrastructure and state of the art facilities to promote this on a public health scale you know uh see it's it's easy to say that you know this po- person individually somebody can afford a transplant they will get a transplant but there is somebody who needs a transplant but cannot afford it so he has to be in the public health system where he'll get an organ and he 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 can survive so everybody has a right to health everybody has a right to live i'm trying to see this from a very business point of view to solve the problem that our country is facing when it comes to medical healthcare at least from a providing doctors perspective uh i hope that this conversation leads to some kind of change i hope so because actually it's not <laughs> seeming like there is a out and out solution you have to yeah. go into each hospital redo the way those programs I are know. done i mean there, there are uh, there are uh, inspections and lot of things done but everything everybody can get a certificate anytime in this country in any place i mean people have to in a nurture that thought that you know this is the righteous thing to do by this group of people i mean they are students and they need to learn also apart from doing work and uh, i mean i don't know how we can do that across the board hey if you enjoyed today's clip make sure you check out all the other clips we've uploaded on this channel you'll find a clip related to almost every single topic as long as you're willing to search for it